It was Alan Bennett, the playwright, who said that a classic is a book you think you've read. In that, if I asked tonight, who's read Gulliver's Travels from beginning to end? We seem to have, oh good, three, great. I wasn't asking for a show of hands in case great embarrassment, but um, most of us absorb works through television or in my generation, classic comics and things like that. And uh, we go through life thinking that we've read these great books. Now, there's another lot of great books, those monuments that we put aside till we have our hip replacements and have a long convalescence. And one of those great books is, of course, Marcel Proust's monumental novel, A la recherche de temps perdu, which was first of all translated uh, as Memory of Things Past, which is a quotation from a Shakespeare sonnet. But more accurately, these days it's called, literally, In Search of Lost Time. Now, Proust's novel is uh, written in seven volumes and was published between 1909 and 1927. It's 3,500 pages long. It has 2,000 characters in it. Um, and it is really the story of a character called Marcel, which happens to be also the name of the author. And I assume that you haven't had your hip replacement yet, so I will just give a brief outline 3,500 pages, of uh, the, the novel. It's about a boy born into the middle classes in Paris, uh, wealthy middle classes. In fact, Marcel Proust's father was a doctor, a very distinguished doctor, who um, was the beginning of uh, uh, um, the cordon sanitaire idea in medicine. Uh, they were very wealthy, and, but he was adored by his mother and in return, um, adored by, uh, uh, he adored her. And he was brought up partially in a town about 25 miles from Chartres in, in, um, in France uh, uh, called Ilier Cambrai, a small village. And, but they only went there in the summers and returned to their house in Paris. Well, the whole novel begins from the, a, a memory which is evoked by him tasting a madeleine, a little French cake which is dipped in herb tea. And the whole sensation bursts upon him and he begins to remember the details of his past. And this past is of him going to Baalbek, which is on the Normandy coast, a, a seaside town. No doubt we've already been, that's been mentioned this evening. Um, and then he meets there a whole train of young girls, amongst them a girl called Albertine, and uh, he falls in love at this stage. He then goes off into the Paris life and into the darker areas. It's a, one of the volumes is called Sodom and Gomorrah, and it's about uh, particularly the Baron de Chalus and his explorations in the homosexual world of Paris. And then he comes back again to meeting the mature Albertine, and there's a mutual struggle for possession between them. He is jealous of her, he is, she is possessive of him, and of course it ends in disaster. And then there's a gap where he goes away to a sanatorium. He's had, uh, Proust himself had asthma from the age of seven. And he goes away to sanatorium, then he comes back, and in the last volume, which is called Time Regained, he sees the past in perspective. And it's that last volume in which the whole thing is resolved. The book is extraordinary in that it has no religious overtones. The whole book is secular, and it's almost as if art has become a secular religion to him. In fact, ultimately, that's the thing that lasts. Memory and art uh, are the two things that are the armature of his life. In the course of the novel, he creates three artists, three fictional characters, who bear the whole of the art theme in the book. There's Bergot, who is the writer. This is largely modeled on Anatole France. 
There's Van Teuil, the composer, who is modeled on Faure and Debussy. And the character that is most interesting to us here is the character of El Stier, the painter. Now, the name El Stier is almost an anagram of Whistler. And indeed, Whistler is one of the contributing uh, people to this character of El Stier. But the major one is Monet. And Monet appears in this fiction as a consistent character. Now, one of the things that Proust says about artists, and uh, Cyril Connolly said it again in the 1930s in a book called Enemies of Promise, is that success can ruin an artist. And he observes in the book how artists are drawn into the great social world into which he went and destroyed by it. But El Stier, in the novel, consciously distances himself from the grand, the haute monde into which uh, Marcel has entered. And as a result, his determination to paint himself, by which I mean to paint his interior life, blossoms and continues, and he becomes a triumphant artist in it. Uh, and Proust is extremely aware of painting. The number of references to painting in the novel are legion. In fact, a very beautiful book has just appeared called Proust and Painting, with um, uh, all the pictures that he refers to in the book. And Monet again and again occurs. Um, Monet's theory of, not theory, but expression of instantaneity, that is, the moment of vision is what I paint, uh, is also true of Proust's art. This, uh, uh, this seven-volume novel, I say 12 because the first translation came out in 12 books, um, these, se these seven books are the result of interior, sudden moments of, of search, the tasting of the Madeleine brings back the whole of his early life. The ringing of the bell in the garden of, of the house of his Tante Leon in, in the thing where he was brought up with his mother, where his mother came and gave him, gave him his first kiss before bedtime. And that sort of all comes back. And it's this idea that what one portrays in art is oneself.